Hey folks, Mill Spec Ops here. Now, normally I'm going to talk with you about satellite phones and having one of these in your quiver, but today we're going to change it up because I have run across something that is a real game changer, and that is the Bivy Stick. Now, this little jewel right here uh, allows you to have two way comms uh, through instant messaging uh, via an encrypted satellite. Uh, all you have to do is have the app loaded onto your phone, and whoever you're communicating with, them have that on their phone, and they don't even have to have one of these. Um, and you guys can communicate two-way uh, through this device. Now, what's really cool is that it is very simple in nature. Uh, it is shock resistant to a mil standard. It is also uh, submersible down to about a meter uh, for 30 minutes without being compromised in terms of water. And then uh, also it's good from about 120 degree Fahrenheit weather all the way down to negative 50. So very robust. The other thing too is it's got this hole built into it so you can clip it on and hang it off your backpack you can slip it in your purse put it in your pocket it weighs about half the weight of a regular cell phone uh, but this bivy stick is amazing um, there are no activation fees and included in that service of unlimited text messaging worldwide um, is a new feature that's uh, sos it's handed through global rescue and so Little red button on the bottom, and let's say you're out in a situation, whether it's on grid or off grid, you decide, I need some help. Uh, you push that little red button and the rescue ninjas are coming to you, okay? So very nice to have. Uh, like I said, it can be used off grid and on grid. You can actually uh, download uh, maps uh, and use them off grid onto your app. Uh, it also gives you live weather which is a really nice thing to have, especially if you're uh, in a bug out situation where you need to know uh, what's coming your way weather-wise, okay? And so, again, this you can use either on-grid or off-grid, but you can check in on your location. You can actually set, and this is the coolest feature, I know my team will be using this from a standpoint of uh, if we had to bug out, we have a location that we go to, um, and say that location becomes compromised. Well, on the app, you can actually select a new waypoint and change on the fly that uh, meetup location, all right? And so now you've got a, a different rendezvous point. All you do is basically punch in the new coordinates. It'll send it to your buddies. Uh, and when it connects to the satellite, it's a, it's a short burst round of um, information. So it doesn't hang on to the satellite and track and track and track. It only goes as soon as you hit the button, boom, to the satellite, and then off grid again it goes. All right. So very cool feature. Again, uh, if you're interested in this, you can get it through the satellite phone store. Just go to sat123.com slash monkeyworks or call the number below in the description and tell them that monkey sent. That's it. God bless. Monkey out. All right, folks. Hey, welcome. Uh, this is going to be your sit rep. It is Wednesday, 316, 2022, coming to you from the great state of Texas about 11 a.m. Central Time. And so without further ado, let's hop over here to the board. Uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of different things today. One, uh, just look up uh, the aircraft that are currently up right now, we're sitting around 300. Uh, still can see the satellites, as you can see up here at the top of the screen. Uh, I say satellites. These are not satellites. They are balloons. Uh, you got three of them over Oklahoma. So that's central, uh, just right in the middle of the U.S. pretty much. And then one up here, that is actually going to be hanging out over uh, Minnesota and uh, let me see that altitude 80,000 feet these are about 70 K and then this one here is at 90,000 feet that's actually over it looks like it's back further uh, deep in the in the Northeast but it's not it's actually over Panama City Florida so um, but just a data point like I said we always look at these these are kind of like uh, uh, the range on these is insane and so these three sitting in the US can pretty much look coast to coast, okay? Um, so, and those are the ones we see. There are a couple others. I see one up here uh, that's about 33,000 feet. Uh, nope, actually, that's not one. Sorry, that's an aircraft. Um, we had two down here in the, in the Baja area, and I'm not seeing those. Or, oh, there's one right there. It's the only one I see, really. Uh, but it's not really giving me an altitude or anything else. We just know it's there, okay? So, uh, but... Here's one of the things I want to point out. Last night, I was looking at the flight app and uh, it caught my attention. And I actually posted about this. Uh, we were looking at the amount of tankers up. Now, this is 10 o'clock Eastern time, 9 p.m. Central time. Uh, and there was probably 25 air refuelers up and six E6s. I've never seen six E6s in as long as I've been doing this 
Uh, four is pretty much the cap. Uh, one thing I have noticed is that I do not see uh, uh, um, Nightwatch. Nightwatch has gone aloof, and I guarantee he's up. You were just not tracking him. So uh, that tells you that the situation here has gotten pretty serious because um, when uh, you see fighters, keep in mind, when you see that amount of air refuelers, that typically is a good indication of fighters. And when you see 25 air refuelers up, flying circles around, that means you got a lot of fighters up, okay, um, at 9 p.m. at night, which uh, that tells you this country is definitely on its toes. Uh, and when you have six airborne command centers, those are actually talking to our ICBMs uh, coast to coast. You had two in central Texas, and then you had them out on the east coast as well as down in other areas. And so uh, that also tells you that uh, they're looking uh, at a lot of different things right now. Um, so I uh, just want to point that out as a data point. It definitely appears that we are on a elevated status in terms of alert if that continues on, uh, because to have fighter coverage over your country that many um, at night is pretty incredible and pretty rare. So, all right, now let's look real fast. I want to show you where you are in Looking Glass. Uh, for those that don't have this, uh, this is a downloadable uh, a tool you can actually get uh, out there online. If you just Google search, um, uh, sky glass it uh flight app it'll actually pull you straight to it and so um i pay about five bucks a month for this bad dude it is worth its weight in gold it is an amazing software i mean it's a game changer like i said um you can track things on this one that you can't track on other ones because it is all crowdsourced uh and i'll show you a perfect example of that right now uh you will see there are two aircraft right here um that are belgian uh, C7, or actually, sorry, A400s that are flying off the coast. Uh, I'm going to show you real fast. I, I caught these just a little while ago. Over on Open ADSB, they have gone dark. They're not out anymore, right? I would have had to hit persistence to track them. But these are the two I'm talking about. Actually, there's four of them. Two of them are U.S. One is the C17 and then an air refueler. And then the other two that you see kicking off the coastline here are A400 uh, Belgians. Uh, both flying as NA and basically just disappeared, okay? So, um, all right, so while we're looking at uh, the heavy lifts, let's get over here to the EU. I just want to show you a lot of activity going on right now. Um, this is actually the tracks over the last uh, 12 hours, but you can see they are moving still quite a bit of stuff around. This is mainly the NATO countries, right? This is going to be uh, primarily the U.S. and the U.K., but Germany's in on the mix of this as well. Uh, but you can see it's a uh, pretty busy sky over there. Now, if we get into the spy craft, uh, you can see the usual suspects are up. You can see we're actually doing a little bit of legwork again out over the Black Sea and uh, in that top little corner of the Black Sea. And then notice that E3CF right here at the bottom of your screen is actually doing that loop. Um, that's because they're doing a cell tower grab. That's man in the middle technology, and they're grabbing data. And then up at the top, you see that uh, little G4. Uh, that's a Swedish bird that's, um, that's actually running routes. They've been doing that up there along the Baltic Sea for a while now. And so um, this looks to be kind of that normal tempo. Again, it's a data grab. Uh, and then we're going to get into more of the details here in a minute about what's going on with NATO, what's the latest. Um, and so um, let me just show you the U.S. spy, uh, sorry, not just spy crap, but the watch list up this morning. A couple P8s over. This is kind of over the, the uh, panhandle of Florida uh, there. And then we've got two sniffers up. Actually, the Shiner 40. I say sniffers. These are looking glass. These are going to be R135s up over the region. And then let me just show you. Let's see. We covered the U.S. watch, heavies, tankers. Um yeah, okay, I think we're good there. All right, so we'll get uh, on over here to this. And this is what the, uh, the war zone is looking like in terms of Ukraine. You can see Russia is on a real slow burn uh, in terms of, of coming in, kind of like that uh, a horseshoe, right? They're just pushing everybody out into Poland and into the other countries. I think uh, we're over well over 2 million now in terms of uh, refugees, and uh, that number's expected to continue on, all right? So... All right, let me back out of Sky Glass. We're going to just, uh, I'll show you real fast. The uh, number sitting up uh, right at 300 is current. We do have a heavy set of trainers up today. Panhandle, 
up here in uh, Pax River and then right up here through the center of the U.S. Okay, let's get over here. I just want to show you something. We did just get an alert that was a uh, 7.3 magnitude earthquake in Japan that just hit. I uh, just want to show you, we've got nine volcano ash alerts right now. That is that's probably the pinnacle. We I don't think we've gone beyond nine. Um, I just about fell out of my chair when I when I pulled this app up and saw uh, that we had nine because that's pretty pretty rare. So these are ash alerts uh, for volcanoes. That's basically letting pilots know, hey, there's there's ash in the area, and uh, it gives them a basically a warning. So like you can see these green boxes, that's actually um, an ash cloud. They don't want pilots flying through that because it's really not good on aircraft engines. Okay. All right, let's get over here to our uh, mail ballot president here. Um, this is going to be flashbang schedule for today. You can see he's not really doing too much. Um, he's delivering some remarks based on what Ukrainian President uh, Zelensky just said a minute ago. And I want to read this to you because uh, I thought it's it's uh, you really can't make this stuff up. Listen to what he says. In essence, the big takeaway is he's telling Biden he needs a man up. Okay, uh, which I thought was pretty funny because. I don't even know if he's capable of doing that. But uh, Zelensky says, as the leader of my nation, I'm addressing President uh, Flashbang. You're the leader of the nation. I wish you were the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. All right. Thank you. Uh, that kind of rings uh, true to uh, what we've been saying. I mean, we know this is all going according to the World Economic Forum. They want one world leader, and, uh, and we know that um, the, uh, the bad dude, the AC, rolls in uh, in the presence of peace, right? He, he signs a peace deal, and um, what he comes in the name of. So, um, even though he's not really about that, right? So, I just think that's interesting. Remember, this is a guy that came out of that forum. Uh, he was a student at the World Economic Forum as well, and so uh, he seems to be really um, hitting the sound bites on this one, right? It's a he gets his chance on the world stage, and what does he do? He basically just regurgitates the stuff he's been trained to say. And so, all right, let's go over here to uh, Forward Observer again. Uh, this is actually for today. Uh, a couple things that pointed out on this I just wanted to show you I thought were interesting. Uh, one is Saudi is actually considering changing or getting away from uh, the U.S. petrodollar and looking at the petro yuan uh, in terms of moving fuel around. Now, the dollar has been forever in a day. Um, that's how people pay for oil. It's just been kind of the normal uh, exchange. Uh, so they are starting to get away from that. That's not a good sign for the U.S. Uh, that, that means that uh, people see uh, some things coming that they probably don't want to be caught up in. Okay. So um, the other thing, too, just want to show you, U.S. is producing, uh, they're, they're actually talking about increasing domestic wheat production. That's because there's a massive shortage. Russia produces about 20, or sorry, about 12% of the world's wheat. Uh, the U.S. is also number one in terms of the, the world's wheat production. Uh, this right here, they say it's not going to help us anything this year. This is actually going to be going forward because uh, they've already started growing the crops for this year. So, uh, they also said that because of drought, uh, it's a pretty big impact in that it's really um, not going to help a lot. But uh, that's the plan is to try and increase it to offset it. But uh, the other thing, too, just want to show you airlines are actually about to start jacking their rates. That's because of the oil. Even though they do buy futures, um, they try to use that to kind of offset it and, and, and kind of ease the, the pain in terms of um, – uh, ticket prices, all right? And so it looks like Delta Airlines has already announced they're getting ready to, to uh, drop the hammer and pass it, the pass the buck to us. So, um, okay. And then let's see, there was uh, really, let me see if there's the, uh, the nuclear doctrine here was one that I just kind of caught my eye. Russian NATO, uh, they're basically, they have a Russian nuclear do uh, doctrine. It says here that uh, they maintain around 1,500 warheads, all capable of hitting U.S. targets. And, um, and then, of course, the U.S. still has no way to interdict uh, hypersonic uh, weapons from Russia or China, for that matter, okay? And so uh, hypersonics are something that you guys may remember Trump was actually pushing uh, for us to get into the business. And we just recently had one fail uh, that we were trying to launch off of the wing of a B-52, I believe, and, uh, and it did not work out. So 
Uh, and then, of course, they bring up the whole point about this Poseidon underwater drone that can actually create a, a radioactive tsunami. Uh, and they've seen that. That's not, not good. So, Okay, pretty big threat. And that is a big tsunami, by the way. Um, they say they can. So, All right, uh, this again, this is uh, Zelensky still pushing Congress to protect the skies. Uh, I did see that NATO is, is actually going to be providing them with some surface-to-air missile uh, capabilities to help at least uh, bring down some of the air traffic over from the Russian perspective. Um, but, uh, again, slippery slope. As soon as NATO engages or the U.S. engages and starts to uh, implement a no-fly zone, we're basically in, we're in the war. Okay, so... Um, that is why we're trying to avoid that and why we keep feeding, putting quarters in the, in the war machine, right? So uh, I did read something about Russia is actually on a, uh, they think, war attrition. Uh, they're already asking Ch uh, China to help them out because they're starting to run out of munitions and things like that. I, I don't know how much truth there is behind that. Um, it seems like, uh, remember, war is an economy, and typically – Countries build themselves out of a bad economic situation through that war machine, right? They start to increase production and start to uh, manufacture new equipment and, and munitions and everything else. So, so it kind of is counter to historical data, I guess is what I'm saying. So I uh, really don't believe everything you read. All right. Now, this one I thought was kind of funny because we've all been saying it for quite some time. <laughs> this guy, Ronnie Jackson. Uh, Ronnie Jackson is actually... This isn't like you or me saying it because we've been saying it. This is actually the doctor for Trump and the doctor for Obama. Uh, and he's now saying, uh, just talking about how the fact that, uh, that in Biden's last speech or Flashbang's last speech, he was just lost, um, that he announced that uh, uh, he had COVID. Uh, he confused his wife with Kamala uh, and then confused himself with Kamala's husband. He said that he was basically just fumbling through everything that he had to say. And so that he really needs to have a cognitive exam stat. And so, yeah, we'll see if it happens, but uh, it's kind of a, we've known it, right? And um, certainly not qualified to do the job. Anybody is really on his staff for that matter either. So, okay, now here's another one too, just a data point, because uh, remember, you're going to see in the coming days that this Iranian deal is probably going to get greased and, and approved and uh, even though, you know, we've got a bunch of um, Republican senators saying that they won't approve anything coming through, uh, I guarantee somehow this will get passed and it'll either be a plane load of money or something. Uh, but we will we will find a way, believe me. Um, and remember, too, Gog Magog, Iran is part of that deal. So they're not going away. And neither is Russia. OK, so uh, but it says here that Iran has 3000 ballistic missiles that can hit Tel Aviv. And that's kind of uh, I think that surprised a lot of people. But. It uh, just kind of reminds us of where we are uh, and how critical it is and the fact that we turn around and give them nuclear capabilities or, or even at the table with them over nuclear talks is absolutely insane. All right, let's go over to the Black Sea real fast. Just want to show you what's going on traffic-wise. You can see the cargoes are the green. Red uh, are going to be tankers. Uh, they continue to run across this area. They're coming through this little uh, blockade kind of deal. I say it's... It's kind of bottlenecked here, uh, running through that part of Turkey, uh, and it uh, seemed to be steering very clear of this area here. Odessa is one of the hot spots. Uh, if you remember our map here, if we get over to this, uh, you can see uh, here on the map Odessa. Down here in that corner, uh, you got Crimea, uh, which is Russian controlled, and then Odessa is actually one of the hot spots. All right, and so uh, that is uh, this is the area at watching all right closely all right over here to the cyber attacks i thought this was interesting as i was looking at it not seeing a lot of the other colors that we typically see i don't know if it's just a data pool and something's not right it really appears that the u.s is is actually spiking quite a few people right now this has settled down just a tad since i looked at it about 10 minutes ago uh we did have multiple sites doing the same spike look uh and that would indicate somebody here those are outbound spikes so that means our cyber attacks are coming from us going somewhere uh but i i find it real interesting when i'm not seeing anything from the pink or any of the other colors here i know that can't be right uh it could just be the map 
uh, let me get over to the round map and see if it changes and it does not so um, but yeah you can see looks to be right now Brazil's doing a lot of stuff and the US is doing a lot of stuff all right now over here to Biggs Army Airfield just take a look at the board we've got some arrivals coming in United Airlines we got a um, Sierra Pacific and then we got a Camber flight Camber is typically uh, troop movement that's coming in from Balt uh, Baltimore Washington inbound to Biggs Army Airfield that's El Paso Texas uh, these right here, I'm not really sure. These, this one, United Airlines, coming from Chicago. That's their hub. And then this one from Tucson is their hub, hub as well. So they could technically be coming in empty. Uh, we noticed that the Camber flight's going to go to Fort Worth Alliance from there, and then it's probably going to bug out. It could be going in any direction, really. There's no, no telling. We'll have to look at it closer here in a minute and see if it shows up on the board. But... Um, uh, could be going to Asia, could be headed across the, the drink over to Europe, all right? Now, this one is a little bit interesting because if you notice, that SPA flight is actually going to Minneapolis, Minnesota, and this United Airlines is headed back up to Chicago. So, um, are we moving, is this immigrant stuff again? Uh, moving them out of Biggs? Remember, Biggs is a gigantic tent city there for immigrants, so uh, possible. Uh, or are we moving troops around, all right? I don't know. I, that's an answer I don't really have, but um, we're going to just keep watching it and see. Uh, eventually, you see a story pop up that confirms what we've been looking at, and then it kind of pieces it all together, okay? All right, this is going to be our uh, Omni flights. Very strange. I have no Omni flights in the air right now, according to this. So either they're off-grid, which is very, very possible, or they don't have any flights scheduled, all right? So first time we've looked at that in a very long time and not seen anything headed across the rink, okay? All right. Now, this is your camber flight. We got this one coming out of Bulgaria, and it looks to be headed. Uh, this is Turkey here, so more than likely it's headed down in, into um, somewhere here in the Middle East based on that kind of trajectory. Giant left, but doubtful, all right? Um, 37,000 feet. So probably not going to be making a turn. That's the Black Sea right here. This is Turkey down here. All right. And so probably it could be headed to Bahrain or, or Bahrain or however you say it. Uh, Kuwait could be headed anywhere. Okay. Let's get over here. I just want to show you this is kind of a confirmation. Again, remember I was just saying that we watch the flights and then eventually we see some type of article that confirms what we're already seeing. Uh, just want to show you right here, it says, report notes that 1,000 Marines have already arrived in country. That's Australia. Now, we've been watching stuff go across over to Japan, and I said it was down in Southeast Asia. I think we also had some going into, obviously, um, into Australia, and we just, I didn't show you a leg of it. I just saw it heading down in that general region. So it looks like they are also planning on putting, uh, they're going to deploy over 2,000 troops to Australia by September. All right, um, in anticipation of a conflict with China. Now, obviously, if China goes hot uh, with Taiwan, then that'll, that'll be moved up quickly. But we've already got a ton of assets in the region. All right, we have been pumping them in there for a month and a half now. Uh, and we've been sending just as many that direction as we have been going the other direction, all right? Now, this is going to be your uh, UK. This is Royal Air Force Transports. Uh, you can just see, looks like this one's coming down. All right, so let me up just a little bit. This is going to be UK. Uh, so this, I can't really tell where it's coming out of. Uh, Scotland is one flight, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name of that one right there. And then this one here is coming out of uh, England. So, uh, but yeah, that probably Norway or somewhere. Um, okay. So that's going to be the UK flights. Those are troop movers again. And this is Swift Air, who is, uh, this thing is insane. I, I, the flights just keep adding up. I mean, I'm looking at, I, I don't know, what is that, 20 flights out there? And you can see them all over the U.S. Now, are they, what are they moving? If they're moving immigrants, I, I, do we trust our government enough to think that these are all taking people out of the country? Or... Is it very possible they're just moving them around and position them into play for a future event? Don't know. 
but I don't feel good about it. Uh, this is a lot of activity, and these are, uh, I mean, you can see Alexandria, we know that's a 24-hour, or sorry, 72-hour holding location. So you've got one coming down from Columbus to this, okay, and you got one coming in from Valley. That's a border, a border town into Alexandria. So when I see Alexandria on there, I feel like, okay, well, maybe they're pulling some people in. They're getting ready to send them back out of the country. Uh, but if this is moving immigrants around and only immigrants, either we've got a major immigration problem and they're not really saying anything about it, or uh, we've got something, something going on that, that probably will shock all of us, you know. And I'm not really sure the answer to that. And like I said, we just watch it. It's a data point. We've been watching these Swift air flights for quite some time. And we know uh, that they do move things. I mean, you can see this one here is headed down uh, into what looks to be Dominican Republic. We've got them down here in Central America. They certainly more than likely are not moving troops. All right. So this is them all more than likely. Time will tell. All right. Now, speaking of shenanigans, uh, we're going to pop in. I want to just show you a couple things. This is going to be Guantanamo Bay. This is a spa. And the reason I'm showing you this is because we've got some, uh, got some things happening uh, that just confirm what I've been telling you for a very long time, that they will wipe flights off the board, and that's how you know you're over the target. All right. Um, and so this right here, notice this is a departure, but there is no arrival. Uh, let me pull up the arrival board and see, but notice on just the short data part, it's not there, okay? So if I pull up the arrival, uh, here it is. Okay, it is on there. Uh, it came in this morning. It's already been wiped from the board over on the other side of this, okay? So coming out of Boca, all right? And then it looks like it from there is headed out to, uh, that's going to be St. Augustine. So we'll just take a closer look at this actual aircraft so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, a little citation. That's a beautiful plane, by the way. High dollar. Very high dollar. So, um, so a little Cessna citation. And if we get down here to look at where it has flown, it's been uh, kind of all over the place since Wednesday. So this is <laughs> all today. Um, let's see. Wilmington, North Carolina. Montego Bay, Jamaica. Uh, from Jamaica up to Washington, Dulles. And then from Washington over to White Plains, New York. Um, we've seen those flights before, which would uh, be kind of like what our N312 would do. Uh, and then we've got this flight, which is not down here on the board, flying into Guantanamo Bay and then back up to St. Augustine. Right. So, again, not showing. It's just, just over here on the departure. It's already been wiped from the, the arrival board. Normally, you see them both on both sides. Comes in, goes out. Now, the other thing here I want to point out, you may remember the other day we were talking on, on our last sit rep on Wednesday that N312FU, which is the Maxwell Bird, flew into Guantanamo Bay, and I said it was an out-of-sequence flight, just popped in and then popped back out. Uh, you may be looking at the board right now, and you may notice that uh, it's not on there. There is no N312FU or anything <laughs> even close to that, all right? So... Um, that right there is going to kind of tell you that they've taken it away. Now, if I go over here to our aircraft of N312FU, you can also see there is no record of it ever being at Guantanamo Bay. So um, they do this from time to time. They've done it back with the Maxwell flights, with the Epstein flights, uh, where they just come in and basically just wipe it. Uh, you know, you've got a board full of aircraft, and if, you know, this is actually that plane, and you can see all the places that it's flown. For some reason, they don't want you knowing that that popped into Guantanamo Bay. And uh, that takes somebody to manually go in there and wipe that flight clean, all right? So, uh, and then the other piece, too, this is in 631JS. This is another one of our birds that pops in and out of Guantanamo Bay from time to time. It was a regular on the schedule. Uh, I just want to show you where this one's headed. It's actually headed out to uh, St. Martin. And then from there back to Lauderdale. Now remember, Lauderdale and uh, Opelika are two locations that we believe are um, operation sites for Alphabet Soup. Okay. All right. Now let's get over here. Let's just take a quick look at where our um, Secretary of Homeland Security has rolled out of or to 
looks like, um, let's see, State College Pennsylvania is in route, actually headed that direction somewhere. Let's see. So here we are, 16th. So he started out at uh, Reagan National. He's up in the brown zone, headed over to uh, Scranton. So I guess he's going to see Mike and the boys get some paper supplies from uh, Dunder Mifflin. And then from there, it uh, looks like he headed over to University Park, PA. And then from there, he's headed back. He may be headed back to D.C. 16,000 feet. Yeah, he may be headed back to the Brown Zone or Livingston. So that is going to be, again, that's uh, your Secretary of Homeland Security. Okay. So back over here to this board real fast to just to take a quick look before we wrap up. Uh, again, we've got some shenanigans with uh, aircraft that are headed out this way. Don't know where they were headed. They were Belgium A400s that decided they didn't want to be seen, so they went in a um, disappeared on us. We got another C17 out here uh, that has also gone missing for us. And so, uh, just to give you a, again closer look, these are the the four aircraft that were headed off the coast um, eastbound and are no longer there. So. Um, the data point, all right. But um, anyway, all right. Well, listen. Uh, that is going to be it for our sit rep today. Uh, things are definitely looking wild, and I would say uh, the coming weeks and days are probably going to be very challenging uh, for the nation. So, uh, if you would just keep keep our country in your prayers, keep those that uh, are getting sucked into this, both in Ukraine and our soldiers. Uh, in your prayers as well, because they are going to need. It. So, all right, listen, that's it. You guys uh, stay frosty, keep the powder dry. Talk soon. God bless. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.